If you have a quadratic equation, you can solve it by using this quadratic formula. The quadratic formula will find the exact answers for you, the exact solutions. Sometimes though, you're not asked to find the exact answers, you're asked to find the discriminant. The discriminant is just the number that you end up with under the square root. It's this b squared minus 4ac part. Um, so you're not doing the entire quadratic formula. You're just figuring out what number would end up under the square root. So you follow the same sort of steps as you do for the formula. You identify a, b, and c. So your a in this case would be 1 b would be negative 5, since it's a minus 5 here, and c would be 3. And then you just plug them in the formula. So you do b squared, um, be careful with your signs, b is a negative 5, and then minus 4ac. Um, so negative 5 squared is a positive 25. Um, remember, a negative times a negative is always a positive. And you can treat this 4 here as a negative 4, Negative 4 times 1 times 3 is negative 12. So I have 25 minus 12. So this tells me that the discriminant of the equation is 13. So think about what that means in terms of the quadratic formula. If the discriminant is 13, that means that you would end up with a 13 under this square root here. The square root of 13 is an irrational number, it's a decimal, but it is a real number. So if you were using the entire formula here, you would add that number and then you would subtract it to find your two separate answers. So in this case, when you have a positive discriminant, that means you're going to have two real solutions. They may be decimals, but that's okay, they're real numbers. Anytime you have a positive discriminant, you're going to have two real solutions. If you think about the graph, if you have two solutions, that means that you're going to have two x-intercepts. So your graph is going to cross the x-axis in two separate places, wherever those solutions end up being. When you're finding the discriminant, it doesn't tell you where the graph will cross, but you do know that if it's positive, it will cross twice. Let's look at this next one. Our a value would be 2. The a is always the coefficient of the x squared term. There's really a 1 here in front of this x, and then the c value is 5. So if I plug it into the formula for the discriminant, I do b squared, that's 1 squared, minus 4 times 2 times 5. 1 squared is just 1. Negative 4 times 2 times 5 is negative 40, so this is 1 minus 40 and that equals negative 39. So for this equation, the discriminant is negative 39. And if you think about what that means in terms of the solutions, look back at the quadratic formula. If your discriminant is negative 39, that means you ended up with a negative number under the square root. You may have been told at some point that you can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, the reality is that you can take the square root of a negative number, but it's going to involve the imaginary number i. And that means that you're going to end up with two complex solutions, two complex roots. You'll still have two because you'll have plus the square root of negative 39 and minus the square root of negative 39. So you'll end up with two answers, but they're going to both involve the imaginary number i, which makes them complex. If you think about the graph of this, since it doesn't have any real solutions, that means it's not going to have any x-intercepts. So it will either be too high and not come down and cross, or it might be too low and come up this way and just not go up high enough. Um, in this case, our a value is positive, so I know it's going to be this shape parabola. Um, so I know it's too high and it won't come down and cross. Let's look at this last one here. I know my a value is 1, b is 12, and c is 36. So if I plug those values into the formula, I get b squared, 12 squared, minus 4 times a times c. 12 squared is 144. Negative 4 times 1 times 36 is negative 144. 
So in this case, it comes out to zero. If you look back at the formula, that would mean that you end up with a zero under the square root. The square root of zero is just zero. So in this case, you would be adding zero, and then you would subtract zero. Well, nothing happens if you add zero or subtract zero, so you're going to end up with the same answer twice. So really, you're just going to have one answer. It's a real answer because you can take the square root of zero to zero. That's a real number. Um, but this time, you only have one of them. So if you think about the graph of this, since it only has one solution, that means it's only going to have one x-intercept. So this type of graph will come down, just hit the x-axis, and go back up. Or it might come up, just hit, and go back down. So anytime your discriminant is zero, that means you have one real answer and one x-intercept.